well fielded. <laughs> Seeing that Kashif has found his range. It'll take a lot for a bowler to get behind those. And he's done well there, Chowdhury. Head down as he goes back to his mark. And this might go again over the uh, long off. It's another six. Takes him to incredible five sixes in his innings. There's no holding back here for Kashif. that down just finds the fielder and he's on his way well played there Mama Mama Kashif 43 of 19 balls five sixes and one four and that's taken the Kuwait to 184 for five and still another over the ball after this you would think uh, the Kuwait would try and look for the 200 200 mark Two golf nations must have uh, had long history of playing against each other. In fact, I think Kuwait was actually in Qatar before this for uh, pre-warm-up games. So they wouldn't be strangers to each other. Last ball for Chaudhry. Just down to uh, long on, trying to go for the second, but well fielded there. And uh, takes them to 185 for five. Last over now, and it looks like Kuwait must have a target in mind of trying to have, get 200 in the boat, which would be a really good score at this ground, considering that the straight boundary is quite short. And the wicket's looking to be a bit of a belter today. Good to have the sun back out after two days of uh, overcast conditions. So it'll be Noman Sawa to uh, finish off the bowling uh, for Qatar. It's about two overs for 25 runs. It's not been very economical. Chowdhury finished off with 4 for 42. 4 overs and 42 runs. Two wickets to his name though. So what can Sawa do here to try and keep the score under 200? New batsman is, is Shiraz Khan. And that's just uh, really loose delivery down leg. Could have made it more easy for uh, Shiraz. Just flicked it off his pads and that's four runs down to fine leg. With the fine leg fielder in the boundary uh, within the 30 yard circle. So not the best ball to start off with. It's the first ball. Five more to go. 189 for five. And signs look ominous for Kuwait. Getting 200. Hit that down to deep mid wicket. Fielded without much uh, concern. Just a one run. Gets Usman Wahid on strike, who's now 20, 22 of 16 balls. So, what can the uh, little stocky left hander do here to try to hit that magical 200? 10 more runs needed to hit 200. Four balls to go. That's a bit of 
of reshuffling of the field here. And so are in. And he's launched that. That is a huge six. And that's gone off to between long on and deep mid wicket for another six. Takes them to 196 for five. And Wahid to 28 of just 17 balls. Strike rate of 164. A pair of Kashif and Usman Wahid. Done well before Kashif was uh, dismissed to get Kuwait to this point. Uh, full toss gets past. Looks like it got past. Under the waist, keeper patting it. You get a single though as a buy. The Qataris do look like uh, flat, look really flat in the field. Crestfallen, to be honest. Matt have just wanted to finish off this uh, bowling and see what they can do with the bat. But this will be a big task. He's bowled him. Big swing across the line by uh, Shiraz Khan. Nowhere close. So Shiraz Khan departs for six of just three balls. Doesn't really matter at this point. Anybody that comes in is just going to throw their bat. Three runs needed for the 200. 197 for six. Naman Sawa with his last ball. Will they get to the 200? So it just speaks the interest here for the last ball. I think uh, many people wondering if uh, Qatar can get uh, 200. All is needed is four. Three runs required to get 200. I'm sure Aslam is thinking about that. He's not going to uh, die wondering. Probably have a swing of the bat. Here we go. And he's hit that into deep mid wicket and. Great catch taken down there by deep midwicket. And they don't get to the 200. And having said that, at 197 for seven, that is a very, very big score and probably a very defendable score for Kuwait. And Qatar have a big task in their hands to try and chase the sun. We'll join you after the innings break. And good morning to all of you.
welcome back to uh, Qatar versus Kuwait at the ICC Men's T20 World Cup Asia Region Final, hosted in Singapore. Elias Ahmed opening the bowling, the left armer. First ball was a wide down leg, and second ball, uh, a dot ball. So Qatar have a big task in their hands here, trying to chase down the score. Very formidable total to defend. And that's a really good shot there by Faisal Javed. Just picked it off uh, slightly down leg. Shot the length, plays a really good pull shot into an unprotected area. Fine leg or not, that was always going to go for four. So not the best of balls, ball there by Ilya Samet. Left armer probably needs to look at looking at that fifth stump line coming in. Then again, good scoreboard pressure for Kuwait. They can probably have a lapse or two. Deep breath by Ilias as he uh, makes his way in for his fourth ball. And that's another great shot. Probably bowling a bit too straight and uh, Faisal just working that off uh, his hips. Really, really good sh shot, strong wrists. And that's another four. And that takes uh, Qatar to nine for no loss of just uh, three balls. Looking at the offside dominant field, um, Elias probably has to think about getting that just a bit wider and possibly That actually was a six. A six, so uh, signal's been changed to six, and that's just, that's now 11, 11 of for no loss. What can Elias do here now? Once again, bit too straight, and he's worked that off his legs. So um, you feel that Elias probably has to uh, understand that that's a really strong area of Faisal's. There's three balls down, leg or straight, that he's dispatched. And the two balls earlier, although one was wide, and the other just missing the outside edge, was outside off on the fifth time line we were talking about. So 15 for no loss, Qatar. Elias in again. And that, that's, that is the line that he has to look for. Forcing Faisal to probably reach out to try and play that through a very protected area in covers. And within 30 yard circle, can't bring those wrists into play or the bottom hand. So very important how Kuwait use the new ball. And so far, Elias conceding 15 runs in his first over, probably only has bowled two balls where you like them to be. Oh, that's a really good shot. A bit too full this time. And uh, Faisal just not holding back again and uh, brings them to 19. Mm, Faisal 18 of just six balls with three fours and a six. Good start to the chase by uh, Qatar, 19 of the first over. You think that the next five overs in the power play is going to give an indication where Qatar will stand, how much scoreboard pressure they can take off. I uh, don't think the captain's too uh, pleased with how his first over has gone from Ilias Ahmed. Just uh, 19 runs of that over. Uh, Kuwait can't be too complacent. At this point, 
and that first over has not started things off very well. Anything happen? T20 game. Game has changed off an over, off a ball. So um, let's see how Kuwait respond to this. Spin coming back on, coming on, and that's why down the leg. It's just a uh, lack of discipline here. I mean, you've got to understand that, yeah, as much as there's 198 on the board, you've got to keep your uh, first six overs and look for damage control because that's when any team's going to try and take advantage. And uh, bowling your first ball down the leg wide and four runs not the best start an appeal there for LBW umpire buddy not interested taking the pace off, just making things a bit harder there for Kamran Khan, who's only facing second ball now, to try and get any pace to work off and try and launch it over the 30 yard. And there you go, a bit across the line, but no man's land. And that's it, and that's four runs. Don't think he hit that too well. Looked like he was going for the um, long on region and that actually ended up going to covers they all count and it's the captain himself has come on to bowl so uh, three run nine runs well fielded there not the best of balls very very lucky that it found a square leg Once again, probably not playing it the best, but he still finds the boundary. Doesn't look like he's hitting it where he intends to, but um, successful so far. So that's 13 runs of the over. And the skipper here has to, to try and curtail his runs because 32 of two overs, and that's a great start to Qatar's chase and puts them in with a chance. Probably going down leg, hits him in the full, but I think umpire, but he reckons it goes going down leg. And that is the over. And Qatar, great start. 32 of two overs for no loss. One would think that if Qatar can probably hit the 60 run mark in the first six that they will put themselves in a very good position to chase the score down. They have batsmen who can play. Qatar very well renowned for big hitting. So they showed against Qatar, uh, Nepal, beg your pardon. Although there was not much on the scoreboard then, but when it's time to take on the, uh, the bowlers, they are very capable. And the man that's asking for his cap at the moment, Faisal. Probably one of the best doing that for Qatar. So, uh, looks like uh, Ilyas is done. After his first over going for 19 runs, brings on Jandu Hamoud, the slow left arm bowler, which probably is not a bad uh, option at this point, just try and take the pace off. And that's probably the safest place you could hit, hit a ball that's straight, straight back over the bowler's head. That's six runs. Don't think that was a bad delivery, but just a really, really good shot there by Faisal. 
Jeffrey Hizzle now sitting on 24 for just seven balls, three fours, two sixes, strike rate of 342. And wow, that, was a, that is just an amazing catch. Faisal will be disgusted because of all the shots. He gets a full toss, rank full toss, hits it straight. Well, not really straight, but took a really good catch to get rid of him. Um, probably didn't hit as hard as he wanted to, but a fantastic catch there. I mean, diving to his right, midair, parallel to ground. And it's half chances like this that uh, can turn a game. And one would think if Faisal had stuck around for the next uh, four or five overs that Qatar, they could have really taken off a big chunk of the score as they head into the non-power playovers. But having said that, Jandu Hamoud has done the job for his skipper. And that was just a fantastic catch there by Shiraz Khan. And Kuwait now can probably, uh, probably really happy to see the back of Faisal. And next batsman in is Awais Malik. You know? All right. Beg your pardon, that's the ca captain, uh, Imam Muhak. Not to be confused by the current Pakistani player, although both of them are countrymen. Former first class player from uh, Pakistan himself, Imam Haq. Batted really well against uh, Nepal in the chase. Very, very mature innings while the rest were trying to hit out. He just um, used his strengths and, and once again playing that shot so well off his feet, which he did against Nepal as well. Just a very, very cool, calm, collected. Very experienced campaigner, Imal Muhak. And uh, just gives the Qatari batting line up a bit of composure and probably will, will, will play anchor at this point. As the rest try and hit out, he'll just try and get the singles and dispatch the uh, balls that he feels can put away. Swell bold, probably pitching on leg stump, leg by. And that goes for four. Really, really quick outfield. A sunny day today. Two overcast days prior. The field looks greener after the rain, which, uh, but it's still not slowed down this uh, outfield. 43 for one. Two balls to go from Janu Hamoud. bold but that's going to be a wide for a moment there I just thought maybe it would have flicked his pads well kept by the keeper still got two deliveries to go and a full toss and is this full toss going to get him another wicket and it has <laughs> oh I you've got to uh, like two really good catches but Two full tosses for those wickets, and uh, it's interesting how Jandu Hamoud, who's bowled some pretty decent deliveries, has been dispatched. But when he's bowled two full tosses, he's taken two Qatari wickets, and another good catch there. Down a deep mid wicket, he had to run back over his head and held that really, really well. So that's put Qatar on the back foot again at 44 for two in this chase. While the run rate's pretty decent of just three overs, the uh, two early wickets has probably just put a bit of a damper on the chase. Still, yeah, they've got a long batting lineup and guys who really swing from the hips, so anything is possible. So that brings Moma Tanvir into bat next for Qatar. He'll join Ina Mulhak in the middle. Qatar 44 for two of three, 2.5 overs, beg your pardon. And uh, last ball, two full tosses. have taken wickets for uh, Kuwait. 
and there's another full toss. And uh, this time it's cleared over. Shot fine leg goes for four, but uh, you would think that if the fine leg was back on the on the boundary, that would have been another wicket of full toss. It's looking for a no ball sign, no no ball signaled, and uh, that's the over. 48 for two, off two, off three, beg your pardon. And is now left to Enamul Haq, you think, to try and settle down this Qatari innings. And they've had a good start in scoring 48 of three overs. Still three overs of power play to go. You would think they would like to hit the 60, 65 mark just to take a good chunk of the runs in the power play when the batting conditions suit the batter with the only allowing two fielders out of the 30 yard and taking advantage of the ball when it's still new and hard. So another change of bowling for Kuwait. We've already used three bowls in just the first three overs. Uh, well played. A bit too straight, but safe shot. Down to fine leg just for the single. And that's Mohamed Arsan has come on for his first over of this match. One off the first ball. In Amul Hakun strike, you'd feel that knowing the style of play that In Amul Haq, uh, possesses, he'll probably try and work this into gap. And if this was anywhere in his range, he's probably going to look to dispatch it. Ball rising very sharply. Wouldn't I wouldn't say sharply, but probably just a bit of a slow bounce. Uh, very early in his pull shot, just hits it to deep mid wicket for a single, and brings Tanrir back on strike, and that brings up the 50 for Qatar for loss of two. Good start to Asan's over. Worked away to deep mid wicket just for another single. And Kuwait will probably need this just to calm the nerves a bit because, as much as there's 198 on the board, Qatar have done a sterling job of bringing the score to 50 of just uh, three overs. Although losing two wickets, probably not in their favor. Well bowled again. Just really good areas. Simple. A good length, all, all three balls apart from the shorter one, but three balls prior. It's very well bowled. Just has enough of pace and maybe just not enough pace in trying to work the ball away. That is a fantastic shot. A short ball outside of stump. Dispatched by the ever reliable Inamu Hak. Square cut over the top, four runs. And sometimes it's just by keeping things simple, not trying to over overdo things. And Hassan was bowling well at that point just by keeping it on a good length outside off and comes back and that's an inside edge and that's probably going to make its way for four no it hasn't it's been fielded there by Ilias and that's the over 56 for two run rate slowed down a bit but probably a much better over bowled by Mohamed Hassan as compared to the rest of his fellow bowlers.
so Jandu Hamud Jandu Hamud back into bowl and oh it's not sorry beg your pardon Elias has come back on after his first over conceding nine another inside edge and that's gone for four fortune favors the brave and uh, that's Kashif, captain for Kuwait, must be pulling his hair out because um, even the good deliveries now are going for, for, for boundaries and uh, opposing target in the power play can only be a good thing for Qatar and they've done a really good job in quality of uh, Enamul Hak there. Just a lofted cover drive over the 30 yard and off a ball that you wouldn't say was uh, pitched in a very bad area. So, uh, Elias has been quite unfortunate in that he's been now being dispatched to the boundary of uh, some pretty decent deliveries, but uh, that's the name of the game. And uh, Enamul Haq, calm and composed as always, a good sense of assuredness, tends to know his game, knows what his strengths are. And uh, that, that's just what's needed at this level. Uh, somebody very experienced, experienced campaigner. And let's see how he structures the chase. That's short and wide, cut and well fielded there by point. Um, that's funny how Elias's first two balls were, which were really good. Found the ball, found its way to the boundary. Well, the ball that wasn't that flash uh, <laughs> didn't go for a boundary. So, what's Elias going to do now? What's a good area to bowl to to Enamul Hawk? That's better for him. Uh, just prod it to to cover. Not much foot movement there from uh, Enamul Haq. I don't think that will bother him too much. These Qatari batsmen can just look over to the scoreboard and feel that uh, having 64 runs on the board at this point is just a very encouraging sign. And inside edge again, and this time stopped by the keeper. true smile on his face it's hard to get a sense of what Kuwait are sensing or feeling about this so far they feel they might feel a bit of grief that there have been a few lucky shots to find their way to boundaries but having said that they've not belled the best as well and Qatar have done really well to put away the deliveries that didn't find the mark trying to pull that not a bottom edge I'd, I would say and uh, Elias is done so not as free scoring as the last four overs uh, takes Qatar to 64 for two last over of power play coming up and if you want to get into the heads of the Qatari batsmen you'd feel that they'll be talking about maybe trying to maximize this over depending on who's coming on to bowl will be Asan again. If they could get about 15 runs off this over, you would you would think that Qatar now would have turned the tables and in this chase and with the batting they have in hand. just punch into the point region well fielded back in Kuwait need a lift they need to understand that this over is really really crucial need to keep things quiet then be allowed to use the field after the power play to try and stem the flow of runs 
again a bit too straight and that's four runs a bit too straight down lake very very strong of the in that region Tanvir and has made him pay so Tanvir who's been quite really rather quiet if one only faced four four balls but he's already on six runs been given a bit of a gift by Mohamed Hassan discipline's key here and Hassan's got to understand that this over of his is probably what's going to determine Qatar's chase if they can keep this quiet and try and keep this under 80 at this point well bowled much better bowling to the field and that's what it's all about just keeping it simple as much of Qatar as much as Qatar's lost two wickets that's a very big score on the board for in the sixth over and and saying that's taken out a big chunk of this chase that's gone off to deep mid wicket just for the one and uh, 69 for two three balls to go Mohamed Hassan, 1.3, 1.4, sorry, 1.4 uh, overs, 13 runs conceded. but it finds the fine leg who's come around to feel that pretty well again Asan this with his tendency to want to bowl that shorter ball when uh, he's better off just keeping it up to the bat where he has so far on a good length and probably grateful that Inam didn't get hold of that A slow ball, well bowled, really well bowled, and probably in the area of the game that Inamul Haq no longer possesses in the quick single, the veteran for Qatar cricket. So very safe in saying that he would have turned down that single even before it was played. Six overs, 70 for two, 128 runs required. And you think Qatar are? Uh, in the better position now um, and very happy with how things have started Jamal what do you think well it's turning out to be an excellent game of cricket Tanvir and the dangerous Inamul Haq still in for Qatar wonderful start given fooled by some jet fool by Faisal Javi 24 of 8 balls two towering sixes three boundaries I think this partnership will hold the key for Qatar Kuwait on the other hand be looking to strike a few quick blows very close first up the double O there sending one wide <coughs> flighted it Namul unable to drill it direct hit almost could have ricocheted easily off for a single but none added to the total One seems to be sliding down the leg side. Two umpires, Buddhi Pradhan, Mishunad and Kalidas, two very experienced men adjudicating this match. The match referee, Mr. Manu Naya.
Kamal Hawk drills it down to long off for a single. Spring to be a good contest. A full toss again. Uh, full tosses have worked really well for Jandu Hamud in his first over because both full tosses took a wicket. This time he's just been dispatched for a four. I think the law of average has caught up with him. Yes. You bowl left arm over the wicket meet twice, you will get hit sooner or later. Yes, and uh, Qatar will feel really, really good about themselves and having taken off such a big chunk of the chase in the power play. Although they've lost two wickets, but... You do feel that at this point, the pressure has been transferred on to Kuwait. The end of seven overs. Qatar 76 for the loss of two. On track, you would say. Yeah, and more importantly, uh, somebody like Inam ul Haq in, there in the middle just gives it. He, can, he almost doesn't seem flustered. Uh, just some so calm and collected, very assured, knows his game. That's just years of experience and being a former first-class cricketer as well. And you can see he's a big... He's so composed and that sort of helps uh, the demeanor of the um, his partner out there as well. And he probably has standing instructions on what the partner has to do. Just making use of all that experience. I'm sure he's been in this situation many a times. Been very impressed the way he's been bowling in the power plays and also with his batting, controlling the innings. The only one aspect which leaves a chink in the armour is the running between the wickets. Yes. Well, having said that, he is uh, getting on the years. Must have been a lot fitter in his day, I, I suppose. But, and that's, 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 that's what's so great about a player like Inamo Hak. He knows what his strengths are and he, he utilises them to about more, almost 120%. And that makes up for the failings of other parts of his game. like a new bowler in for Kuwait and that will be Aslam coming in for his first over on the money straight away Mohammed Aslam number 17 left arm orthodox from the Sarangoon road end tell you what the wickets played beautifully yes it has it's probably uh, nullified a lot the uh, left arm spinners capabilities as well uh, although having said that, I don't think Hamoud did himself any justice bowling full tosses. But with that newer ball in this wicket, you don't think the left arm spinner is going to get as much turn off the wicket or much grip. So it's better off just angling in, in as much as you can, which he probably is doing there right now. That's the whole poetic beauty about this game of cricket. Perhaps his worst two deliveries gave him the best two results. <laughs> yes, it was. And it got rid of the very dangerous Faisal, who was just... Who just launched into his innings and got Qatar off to the best of starts. You would think that if he was still there, he'd still be uh, hitting them all over the park. Tanvir and Inamul Haq content rotating the singles, ensuring that they consolidate and further build on this wonderful start the openers have given them. His Faisal seemed to have had a few Red Bulls. He was on wings this morning. Yes, he was, uh, he was ruthless. Namul Haq trying to guide it down to short third man. Aslam bowling to a short third man, backward point, cover, sweeper cover, and a long off on the offside. Looks to guide that one down the leg side. Don't think he's going to get much joy with his LBW appeals because I think his line is more very straight down and probably pitching on leg. At the end of eight overs. Qatar, 78 for the loss of two. The command center here. Beehive of activity, journalists, media personnel. The crowd slowly building up as we approach lunch. A beautiful Friday afternoon here in Singapore. It's been sunny and bright. 
and the cricket has been absolutely trailblazing. Where do you think Qatar have to be at the turnover mark to make this chase? As much as it feels that Qatar in control, there is still a bit of scoreboard pressure. I think they'll just look to continue and these two batsmen, they'll look to be there deep into the innings, around the 15th over mark and um, that would enable Qatar, I feel, to chase this total down because there's no demons in the wicket and uh, Kuwait, on the other hand, to feel comfortable, they'll need to keep picking wickets at a regular interval. Yes, I do feel at this point, you look at the field and you, th you think that possibly half the Kuwaiti fielders out there feel that they're not in that bad a situation, but probably the other half that are feeling a bit nervous. It's a wide signal there by a Kali. Once again, punted to deep back with square leg. This is actually turning out to be a pretty decent over by the young Hamoud. I love his selection of numbers. Zero. Seems to be one. He's not too bothered with such things. That's probably hoping for the number of runs that he'll be conceding. Zero. But, uh, Absolutely. Really case. Looks like Meet Bavzar there doing patrolling duties at deep back with square leg. Possesses a good arm. Sends in a flat return. Do you feel that if Tanvir kept his shape, he'd probably be hitting those balls a lot better? Strong guy. And that's a good shot. But with the field back, drill down to long off. Yes, I think you should back yourself to hit straight, given the dimensions of this field. It's short, straight boundaries. And these Qatari batsmen are absolutely power packed. It's well bowled. He's bowled a really good over. That's a good bit of fielding off his own bowling. Bowlers hate conceding runs off their own bowling. I'm yet to meet a charitable bowler. Adnan Idris fielding at long on. Played a beautiful hand, scored a half century. It's again forced off the back foot. That's a no ball. It's overstepping. And that's, after all the hard work of bowling a really good over, he's overstepped, no ball, and you don't want to be giving a free hit to uh, these Qatari batsmen. So, Kali, that's the umpire showing where he'd gone over the mark. Hamu Damanullah committing the crime, overstepping as a slow bowler. It's unacceptable. The field. The shine off of what? Could have been a very good over. Just kept it to singles and now he's got to concede a no ball and a free hit. Field changes as the batsman crossed during that. Now in Amul Haq on strike for the free hit. He's launched it straight uh, to long on and they didn't bother taking a single. Yeah, which you... I've got to say that that was pretty... Uh, <laughs> Ordinary, they should have at least taken the single because every run's going to matter. Yeah, I mean, Inamul Haq's an experienced cricketer, but I'm sorry to say he's running between the wickets is just rubbish. Yes, that, that's uh, not the best. And In a T20 international, every run matters. It's gold dust, and you cannot be casual about your approach. Exactly, even the free hit doesn't feel find the boundary. At least you know that you can get a single somewhere. Everyone's on the defensive trying to stop the runs and... Uh, if that one, if they were to lose by one run today, they they should look back on that one moment. If Qatar loses by one run today, Inamul Haq would be facing the firing squad. <laughs> Pretty sure he would be. They will shoot him with blanks, so yeah. it wouldn't kill him, but it would hurt. <laughs> that uh, that was poor. I mean, uh, not something that you want to see too much happen in T20 cricket because this is a big score that they're trying to chase down. You can understand if it was just. 120 like they did against Nepal, they became selective in their running. Well, Kuwait and Qatar seem to have decided to have a little refueling session in between the match. Don't think the umpires are too pleased about that. I don't think uh, they were expecting this. 
Well, it uh, seemed to be a coordinated distribution of drinks. <laughs> yes. I think they're facing a different heat down here in Singapore. Yeah. It's very humid. The boys from the Middle East, they're used to a much drier heat. Umpire Kalidas letting them know this is not on. Punted to long off for a single. Mohamed Aslam continuing to bowl a very good line and length here. It just looks like both the uh, left arm spinners have found their stride because uh, full tosses have uh, disappeared. <laughs> Although they did work in taking wickets, but. Uh, He's bowling a really good pace, uh, spearing it into, and that might be a catch. Nope. Just a single. And he's bowled really well. I think he's kept uh, both these very able batsmen quiet, spearing into the pads. Minimal turn, but uh, left armer's angle always, always difficult to face up to. Yes, Quaid wouldn't mind the singles at this moment. That looked pretty close. close. But the Pradhan, the best position to judge, says well, not out. Probably pitching leg and with the lack of turn, maybe even going down, continuing to go around leg. This Muslim, uh, Mohammed Aslam, bowls from wide of the crease, creates a big angle. Seems to be going down the leg side more often than not. Good decision. Smart bowling too, because that's where it's hardest to put away if you get it right. There you go. Looks much closer and he's given him. That's the end of Tanvir. Runner ball 16. Aslam making the adjustment in line this time. Tanvir going right across it. Pays the price. This time the umpire Buddhi Pradhan has no doubt about it. That was hitting middle sump halfway up. Yeah, he put that down to the two, the over before as well, where they kept things quiet. And all of a sudden, the, the Qataris who like to have a bit of a swing probably felt the need to try and look for a shot, manufacture a shot. I'll tell you what, I met a few Nepali supporters at the hotel, and there's a lot of people south of the Everest cheering Kuwait on here. Yes, <laughs> after the uh, antics of the first day. Where nobody, nobody expected Qatar to, to beat Nepal or beat them as that easily. It says Awais Malik, but it looks like uh, Tamur Sajad, if I'm not mistaken, who has skipper, walked out, skipper. the skipper, to join Inamul Haq. Number seven is the skipper, Tamur Sajad. It's a wonderful player. I think Qatar has the ideal pair in the middle at the moment for this situation. Let's see how they react. This beautiful bowling here by Aslam. Keeping it tight. And a rare defensive shot. <laughs> Don't see that too much in this form of the game. There you see the Manhattans. Qatar really getting off to a blazing start. And now being masterfully pulled back by Kuwait the loss of those three wickets tell you this match will go right down to the wire Inamul Haq and Tamo Sujad do hold the key for Qatar Kuwait would be looking ideally to see the back of one of these two gentlemen and preferably both Shiraz Khan 
new ball in. Let us spin and let's uh, put down towards uh, deep cover. Field it well. Back in for just a single. Shiraz Khan took a fantastic catch today to dismiss Faisal, who was in a very destructive mood. I think Kuwait can thank him taking that half chance and ensuring that Faisal didn't stick around because you do feel that the way Faisal was going. That's a magnificent delivery. Beats the Qatari skipper. Slightly faster. Tipped on him. Beat him all ends up. He's at the halfway mark. Qatar 88 in this chase. Punch down to long off for a single. The required run rate going up to 8.51. Quite manageable on this ground. Qatar requiring a further 109 runs with seven wickets in hand from 57 deliveries. You do see a bit of a spring in the step with the Kuwaitis as well. I think after the start of the uh, the power play, it yes. looked a bit flat when Qatar got away to that blazing start. And now in having taken three wickets, I taken third wicket, sorry, in the last over, it just looks like uh, Kuwait just have a bit more belief. That looks pretty close. And by Kali thinks otherwise. Yeah. Probably a bit too high. On bit too the, high, yes. And also probably spinning enough to go down leg. Yes, Qatar maintaining a run rate of 8.5 at the moment. They'll need to step on it. That's the gap between runs required and, and balls. That is a very, very crucial wicket. And Shiraz coming on is probably has played a part in taking, getting rid of two of Qatar's most dangerous players, first in taking that diving catch in cover and now removing Inamul Haq, who you feel was the key to this chase with his composed demeanor. But now this just turns the tables uh, back in Kuwait's favor. And you can see now that Kuwait also feel that collectively that they're back in it. Tell you what, this ICC World T20 Qualifiers Asia Final it's provided some absolutely breathtaking cricket. All teams fighting tooth and nail. They know the importance of every match as only one team will proceed from here onwards to the UAE, to the global qualifiers. And if Kuwait wins today, once again, throws the table wide open. Yes, and Qatar dealt a major, major blow. Don't think uh, Tanvir would have wanted to see the see his partner in the middle leaving the way he did. Very uncharacteristic hoik of the bat by uh, Inamul Haq. You do feel that maybe an error of judgment because he had his captain out there and you have your most experienced batsman just to take it to the 15th over and keep wickets in hand and they have enough bat batting in the ranks to, to clear a shorter boundary straight. So maybe not doing himself any favours and putting Qatar under more pressure and that scoreboard pressure now is starting to tell. Yes, it's still 107 runs being required. Tamur Sajad will have to play out of his skins to pull this one back to get Qatar over the line. It's very capable of doing that. At the end of 11 overs, Qatar 91 for the loss of four wickets. Top edge this one, drop short of the fielder, who makes almost a meal out of it. Yes, always be careful of the spit. <laughs> it's made so many fielders look silly over the years. The uh, spin of the outfield after landing. Aslam's been doing a wonderful job for Kuwait and his skipper. He's been their best bowler by far since he's come on. He's been 
just kept things quiet, whilst the rest of the balls took a bit of tap. As he's into his third over, has only conceded five, picked up a crucial wicket. Considering that there's 92 runs on the board and he's only conceded five, it says a lot. Mohamed Rizlan, the wicket keeper, out there batting with his captain. This Qatar has got to be intelligent. They just need to take this chase. Fielded there by Asan. Taking Qatar to 95. Asan Nasser there with a bit of deft footwork. They made Ronaldo proud. Yes. It's a long way down for the big man. Yep, the good old big boot, they call it. So Got the size 14s down on it. Yep, it's big enough, why not? As long as you're not stepping on the ball. Well played, stepped off to point. Well fielded, good arm. Shiraz has looked uh, very active on the field. And that's probably been the difference between the two sides. Qatari probably more of an aging side and well, well Kuwait he's possessed some younger cricketers. Oh acrobatic attempt. Can't prevent the single. Yes, Shiraz has been an absolute live eye at backward point. Yes, Qatar will be feeling the heat from many different sides. At the end of the twelfth over, Qatar ninety six for the loss of four. 103 more runs required. I think credit should be given to Aslam here. He's bowled three overs for just seven runs in the sc score that scoreboard is reflecting 96 for four after 12 overs. That's just quite sensational. And I think you would say that that's the area uh, of, of his bowling that's pulled, pulled uh, Kuwait back into his game after such a blazing start by Qatar. Yes, sometimes all the run making and wicket taking gets noticed and the run restrictions hardly get a mention. Exactly. In this but form of the game, it's uh, you would feel that every two overs of uh, of maidens is as good as taking a wicket. So. And Mohamed Kashif once again, the captain for Kuwait. Brilliant 43 of 20. Shiraz coming into ball from the Ballastia Road end. He's got the golden arm today. Let's see whether he can pick one more up. Beats the batsman outside off stump. Yeah, we think at this point the Qatari batsman looking at the scoreboard and thinking, you know what, there's uh, still a lot to do. Uh, you might see Rash's shots, although. That's been pun uh, hit down to deep extra hour. Uh, we would say, yep. Uh, long on, long off, sorry. For a single. Kuwait wouldn't mind these singles. The pressure is certainly on Qatar to make the play. Uh, he's launched that. That is gone. That is a huge hit. Tamo Sajad depositing. Shiraz over the pavilion. That one's got frequent flyer miles on it. That's gone a long way. Yep, that's gone. It's got the uh, ground staff scrambling to look for that one. It's gone over the clubhouse. To Barak Da, the extra umpire today, gentleman from Hong Kong, bringing out the spare balls. Gonna need a few of them. If Sajaj keeps continuing in this frame of mind, and this is exactly what Qatar requires at the moment as well. They need to get a move on here. But it's a tricky situation, Arjo. They can't afford to lose much more wickets. No, nope, they can't, and they need to step on the gas. Uh, they need some big hitting now, uh, just more like what just happened then. And credit to the ground staff as well. They found and retrieved most of the balls that made their way out this very small ground. So, our facilities manager, together with his troop of trusty men, doing a great job. Put on a wonderful square and a wonderful outfield for this cricket action to take on.
Nice and flat. Well fielded there by Aslam. In for the single, that's it. Safe. Right over to the wicket keeper. Mohamed Rizlan. Can he do something more? He can. That's gone again. Same area. Magnificent shot. Hung back. Read the drift. Deposited it in the pavilion. Yeah, you would think that that was in the arc for him, and he's played that really well. Just played play through the line, stayed balanced, and and this short straight boundaries. You would think that even on a bigger ground, they'll probably find its way beyond the boundary. And uh, that is just given Qatar's innings a bit of life. 111 for four. The end of 13 overs. Good friend, senior umpire Sarika Prasad, coming in to say hi. It's always nice to see him. Well, what a match this is turning out to be. Qatar refusing to go away. Kuwait looking to close it out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are tuned in, don't go anywhere. This one's going to go down to the wire. It's very, very crucial over now. And Haslam is bold, only conceded nine runs of his three overs. If he can do the same this time, you would you would think that he would just bring Kuwait back into it. And a single off the first ball. I think smart batting as well. I think one of the two batsmen, they'll decide to take a few chances. They can't afford overs to just drift by. Kuwait, on the other hand, wouldn't mind these singles at all. well bowled really well bowled just uh you say you could say a harmless single <laughs> to long off tamosha judge having a look at the deep mid wicket boundary might be planning to go straight misses an opportunity a full yes. toss down the leg side only manages a single to short fine leg be yeah, disappointed. That he would be very disappointed. That that should have found its way to the boundary. Not the best of balls. Probably the worst ball that uh, Aslam's ball will bowl all day. Uh, well bowled again. This is an excellent over. Mohammed Aslam really showing how it's done. What he's done really well is he's he's changed the pace up and he looks for these angles coming wide, coming close to the stumps, not relying too much in turn. Once again, just another single. And if you also see his release points, he, he, he looks like he's undercutting the ball. And um, that doesn't really allow the batsman to get underneath it. It skids on off the surface. If any youngsters watching, this is excellent left arm orthodox bowling. Just someone who knows where his fielders are and doesn't try too much. Just uh, using... Gets finally from Qatar, putting the pressure on, running the first one hard. That did extract the mistake from the Kuwaiti fielder. At the end of 14 overs, Qatar 107. Modern T20 game. Anything's possible. Yes, true. Um, do, however, feel that uh, they need a plan of action now. And it's about taking on... They need two heavily, heavy scoring overs. It's about the captain who's out there in the middle with his... With Rizlan um, trying to pick out which bowler to go after. Um, Aslam is done with his overs, so he's out the way and not, they don't have to be too concerned about him anymore. Uh, yes, my trusty calculator on the mobile says they require 13.5 and over. Right. <laughs> that is good here. Hopefully oh. there's no collision. This uh, ball safely drops between the two fielders. Yes. Kashif should have let the fielder coming in off. And uh, the Qataris will need to... 13.5 and over scoring singles. True. Once again, single down to long on. No damage done. Kashif coming around the wicket, spearing into the pads. 
not giving them too much room to free the arms. So it's got good protection on the boundary. Yep. He's played that Deep. well of his feet, but that you would think would only be one. Oh, a bit of a fumble, but uh, recovers in time. This is where really Qatar needs to get their running between the wickets and the urgency on. They're only barely jogging the singles. They really need to get a push on. It's a well-fortified leg side field, long on, deep mid-wicket, deep backward square leg. And a cow corner. This is excellent bowling by Kashif. Intelligent cricket. Well, that was a full toss once again. Let's be it in nice and sharp into the pads. Just does not allow too much for freedom of a shot. And even if they do get hold of one, it's a very protected area. So, yes, yeah, very, very smart. Whether he's doing it intentionally, though. <laughs> there you go. Again, into the protected area. Just a single. It's a very no good one. Done. And Kashif has finished off his over there. Done very well for his. He's taken the pressure off the Kuwaiti team at this point. At 15 overs, with five overs left, that run rate is a mountain now. Yes, I think uh, Qatar only got themselves to blame, having received a wonderful start by the openers. They seem to have lost the momentum in the middle, especially with their lackadaisical running between the wickets, their inability to put some of the loose balls to the boundary. Now, I feel they have left quite a bit. Yes, the old saying, but uh, I like what you added on at the end. But... Uh, uh, yeah, well, look, it's the modern game, T20. It's not about just hitting and hoping. Uh, there are so many aspects of the game that add to the value of a T20 cricketer. And running between the wickets is definitely one of them. You just need to be pushing that first one hard as much as enough to, to do that. But uh, Piercing the gap between deep extra cover and sweeper, that ball was begging to be punished. Kamur did exactly the same. Wonderful shot. Can this be the big over that Qatar was looking for? On this occasion, hits it down to deep extra cover. Well positioned fielder. Shiraz Khan coming from the Sarangan Road end. This has gone miles in the air. Takes the wicket. Quaid's pumped up. It's gone the wicket. The crucial wicket. That might just be it for Qatar. Quaid certainly hammering the nails in now. That ball went miles in the air. That was a very good catch. Had a long off, made it look easy. Quit. Should they win by a massive margin, that would also boost their net run rate. And once again, this tournament be wide open. Singapore leading the points table at the moment. With three points after two matches, winning one and one abandoned game. Malaysia placed second, playing two matches, winning one, losing one with two points. And Nepal, having played two matches with one win and one loss, also has two points. Qatar, two matches, one win, one loss, two points. Kuwait, two matches, one loss, one no result. And they look like they're on their way to a victory here. This is excellent bowling. And right after this, the two o'clock game between host Singapore and Malaysia. Be another crucial one. Today being a Friday, expect a lot of people to come in and watch that. That's a wide. Shiraz will not be happy about that. The Qatar captain out there, Tamur Sajad, doesn't give up till the end.
turns it around, smashes it to deep backward square leg. Unfortunately for Qatar, the singles will not have the desired impact. Kuwait now slowly, slowly but surely applying the rear naked choke on Qatar. It's an excellent bit of bowling. That's the end of the 16th over. At 134, the loss of five. There you can see the worms. Qatar falling below Kuwait there. It'll be a steep climb from here if they are to surmount this required run rate. Kuwait looks well and truly in control. Manhattan's firmly showing Kuwait in control. That middle period from around the 7th over till the 13th, costing Qatar dearly. Losing regular wickets and unable to get a move on with the required run rate. Kuwait on the other hand, they'll be very pleased with the way they have come out and played with intent today. Batted exceptionally well and backed it up with some brilliant fielding and bowling. Hassan, once again hitting the deck hard, bowling to his field. Sanka Vardappan there, deep mid wicket, does the fielding. These singles are not going to disturb Kuwait at all. Tamu 25 off 21. No man yet to get off the mark. Hassan Nasir, experienced campaigner, running in from the Ballastia Road end. It's well fielded down there, deep extra cover. Another top ball. Ajua come back. Yeah, well, look, uh, I do feel at this point you can safely say that if Qatar were to win it from here, it would take a sensational effort. Um, Kuwait has probably uh, gone through the, uh, the worst part of this game and survived with a great start and uh, weathered the storm. If Qatar wins it from here, my neighbor will eat her grandma's wig. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> you might have just spoken too soon. <laughs> I said my neighbor. <laughs> yes, I like how neighbor was emphasized. <laughs> Underscored that it was my neighbor. It's a magnificent uh, shot. That is. Drilled over long off. Stand and deliver. Uh, baseball like. That moves a chart. He's in no mood to hang around. It's deposited. Asan. Well over long off. Hating disregard for what for the bowler and what you said. <laughs> My neighbor might be starting to look for that wig. 
Oh, God. Some been some entertaining cricket, absolutely. From ball one. Yeah, Once he's again. in the mood now. Well, there's nothing else he can do, really. All he has to do now is just launch and hope. And that was a good start in where that ball ended up. So... He would find. He would see. You. You probably need to hit about four or five more of those to make it even close. And I tell you, the the best way to get your mind free and relax is just to go for it right now, yes. and then anything could happen. Well, it's come to a point of game where if you tried and got out, nobody's gonna really give you any grief when you get back to the dugout because that's all that's needed. And there's no glory in coming not out. <laughs> True. <laughs> Asan Nasir. The wheels almost came off the truck at that point. Yep. Bowling a wide. I think he's feeling the heat a little bit. Yeah, he just doesn't want to put it into that zone with the straight boundaries being so short. But he could probably afford to at this point uh, just to go for the whole concept of uh, if you miss, I hit. Uh, he's bowling a bit straighter. That's a great shot. That's dispatched with ease. Very, very good shot. Uh, down to cover. Asan Nazir, he'd be glad this over is finished. Qatar 144 for the loss of five wickets at the end of the 17th over. 18 balls remaining, 58 runs. I tell you what, I still feel this is going to be a very close game the Qataris managed to hit a few big ones in this over. I guess it's all about who comes on to bowl at this point. Uh, it, it Looks like the paceman coming in. This might even help Qatar's cause. A few yeah. educated edges. They'll be hoping for everything. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Qatar can rest in the knowledge that the left-arm spinners have probably bowled out. So, um, and the best of them in Aslan would bowl really well. So Shiraz Khan looks like he's got one more left uh, and that must be him coming on right now. Yes, Shiraz Khan's got one left. Mohammed Ashan's got one left. Janu damud has got one left. Kashif himself, the skipper's got two. And ahmed has got two. Well, Kuwait seem to be confident bowling their spinners and why not? They've done the job. Yes, and... Uh, if picture us to ball his last over from the right end because that is the longer boundary and being what looks like off spin uh, leggy or leg spin sorry about that it was confusing kashif for shiraz um that long boundary there takes a bit of hitting uh, especially six. against the stern exactly Slight misfield there, allowing the batsman to scamper through for a single. Kuwait wouldn't mind that. Qatar need more than singles. Not hurting Kuwait at all at this stage. And looks like the left arm, uh, left arm paceman, and that is gone miles in I'll take a bit of catching, running in. Oh, great attempt! Great attempt. Um, that would have been more for sure than anything else because at the end of the day. Still only one run. Drop catch, I don't think Kuwait would be too bothered because that he covered a lot of ground trying to get in, trying to take that. Hamad Damanullah really showing the intent and the commitment. That's sort of been the mindset with which Kuwait has played today. That's enabled them to get into this strong position. Wonderful to see. It's good for this tournament as well. They've just, they've just, actually not a bad setup. Uh, Kuwait, good side. Looks like batting is their key strength. Um, and that's a very well played shot. It's a high quality shot there by the skipper. Switch hit. And he's hit that. And that was probably a, a risk worth taking. And he's paid dividends. Gone for four in good time. Hit it with the spin. Shiraz Khan trying to keep the ball outside off. Tamo Sajad only manages a single. 
That'll be the end of the 18th over. Qatar 153 for the loss of five wickets. Just looking at this chase as well, uh, it just shows that at this ground, 170 is not a not a safe score at all. So uh, the other day, uh, we were always thinking 180, 185 was the pass score on the track, and the lightning quick outfield, the short straight boundaries. Let's take away those 18 additional runs here in Kuwait's target, and this would have been a very doable chase for Qatar. Right now, 45 runs required off 12 balls. Looks like my neighbor's wig's going to be safe, are you? Yeah, I think, uh, don't want to think of what a wig would taste like, but I can't imagine it'll taste too nice. Ilias, the left arm baseman who opened the bowling, uh, took a bit of uh, tap in his first over, went for 19 runs in his first over, and now with uh, the big asking rate probably not a bad time to see how he goes yeah Silias Ahmed left arm around that's not a good start for Ilias that's four drifting down the legs Tamu Sajad helping it on its way past the backward square for four you do wonder however if Kashif has just got this a bit wrong here because not a good time to uh, introduce a baseman who's not actually found his stripe today. So, if this over goes for plenty, you might you might just see that wig coming back into contention again. So, just the one. Just the one. Yeah, look, Ilias has got to get this right. It's just things like that doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, you know balls return back nice and fast and then you're letting go through your legs and the batsman at the striker's end he was winding to his gloves mm -hmm. captain Tamu not impressed with that he would have been looking to get on strike that's for again gun barrel straight drilled it back pass Ilyas Ahmed getting the treatment here today it's not been his day for a fast bowler see a lot of the fielders uh, gesticulating to Elias as to where to bowl it probably bowling a bit too straight being a left armor with that pace uh, the bottom hands come into effect for the Qataris yes Adnani Dri is very animated at long on there you go again but should be safe and it's gone for four <laughs> if, if, you know what uh, I want to ask the neighbor to take that wig out of the closet and keep it on the table. Ilyas Ahmed has got the teapot on, hands on hips. The very animated Adnani Dries chooses to support his bowler nonetheless. Well, this is still not over, isn't it? No, it isn't. But you have to question that whether Skipper Kashif has done the right thing here. So, why, why get a team like Qatar back into contention. Yes, that's what, as we were discussing before, if you do bring the pace, that's really helping Qatar out. The spinners have been doing a wonderful job. Well, I think he should be bowling wicket to wicket, not dishing out those bowling machine deliveries. Doesn't have too much pace to bother the, um, the batsman, so you need to be very particular in where you... Uh, when you hit your areas. And that's probably good in that he's got the batsman having to reach and uh, play a more honest shot. So that's just safely down to deep cover for single. And that's over. And I think uh, Elias will be happy that he's uh, only had an onslaught of three fours. Um, Qatar 167 for the loss of five at the end of 19. Well, we are about to start the last over of the day. 31 runs required, is that right? Yes, 32 to win. 32 to win, sorry. Qatar requires. That's what Crick Info says. I believe it's 31, Arju. Yes, but I got it right. Yeah. 
So Elias Ahmed has gone for 41 runs in his three overs. Um, that's probably criminal in uh, in T20 in any form, really. So I would have asked him to buy my neighbor a new wig. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure the neighbor neighbors just now very happily put that wig back in the closet. Looks like Asan. Nasser to bowl the last over from the Sarangoon Road end. Great team pumped up here. I think we're feeling wonderful to get on the winning board. Well, having said that, though, Asan conceded 28 of his three. So, don't know. Let's see. Lead all his experience here. It's a funny game. There you go. That's found some legs and that will go for, let's see, four. Yes, this is not very intelligent bowling. I think the heat might have got to him. Yeah, and he's got to understand that all his short balls have not been very effective. Uh, not this wicket. You need to have a bit of pace about you to... Well, that's very unlucky. It didn't go all the way. It just fell inches short of the rope there. True. Hassan Nasser. I think he's taking a punt on the law of averages. Good shot, and it looks like it's going to make its way for four. What a shot that was! He hit that with really, really good force, good hands, just through the line. And uh, still, I think a bit too much to do at the end here. Yes, this is, uh, and also I think bringing back the pace bowlers is a very risky call. Good thing that they had 31 runs to defend at the beginning of this over. Exactly. Otherwise, it would have been. Well, he's gone again, and this is going to make its way for six, right on the fence, and... I tell you what... It is... This game might not be over just yet, so... Hassan <laughs> Nazar, he's really dishing out some meat pies. Kata, they're gleefully ex accepting the drinks and the treats. And uh, it, is, it is quite shocking, really, I mean... Yes, you've been brought on the ball. You've, you are a pace bowler, but you can be smart in the way you, you know it's a short boundary straight. And to bowl it full in that strike zone with a military medium, really, you're really asking for it. And why leave it to chance? And uh, all of a sudden, the Kuwait is looking a bit flustered. Uh, keeper, you can always tell by the keeper, is how animated he is. Looking around, talking to Kashif, his captain, probably asking, why do we have to bring the, the paceman on at this point? Because I um, think Kashif had a few overs left up his sleeve. Yeah, Kuwait also needs to slow the game down a little bit here, sort of. They're just going through the motions to close it out. And that's There you it. go. That's a much better result. Even three sixes at that point would have done it. So, um, safely say that Qatar's won this. It will take a lot. As somebody was just mentioning in the room that a white four, if we came along, you'll need about three white fours now. So, and bowl that well, straight back down. And the last ball to be bowled, 15 runs required. Yes. Hassan Nasser seems to play, have been playing for a very, very long time for Kuwait. Mm, yes. And he looks like he's feeling the heat. Yeah, yeah, I think he's glad that this is going to be the last ball of the day and that his team has won. He's just probably just going to bowl it wherever he wants and even if were to go for six at this point. Don't think he'll be too bothered. He's gone for 44 runs so might, far. Might be looking forward for an ice bath. Yes, definitely. Last ball of the innings. And that is going to be four. Four runs. So, Kuwait have won this quite handsomely. Um, by 10 runs. Or 11 runs, sorry. Five wickets. And by five wickets, right? And um, 
a very good win here by for Kuwait, and they get their their first points. Not so much points, but they had shared points before the one point against Singapore, but now they've picked up a win and added two to that tally. So Qatar, after the jubilation of beating Nepal and looking to be and throwing this race wide open, have lost to their Gulf neighbours. Kuwait, familiar foes, I'm sure. And uh, now everybody's got points, and it leaves it to a very interesting two days. Yeah, the next game is going to be an absolute cracker. Singapore versus Malaysia. Don't go anywhere. We'll join you shortly with the award ceremony.